What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're just gonna work on disassembling everything we can. I mainly wanna get the rear suspension, trailing arms, gas tank lowered, exhaust taken off the car, and I guess we'll see where the day takes us. Today I'm gonna show you how to remove the dashboard out of the CRX. One of the first things we'll need to do is remove the center console. You're gonna have a handful of screws. You have one here, one in the center. There's gonna be one, this doesn't have the glove box, but go ahead and open your glove box, remove that screw. There will be another one right here. One more back here in this hole, and the other one right down here. So you're gonna have a total of six screws you need to remove. After you have the screws removed, Take your shifter, just pull it back. That way you can pull this back a little bit. You'll also have to put, put the e-brake down so you can slide it up over it at the same time. And then you're just gonna pull the entire assembly forward and off. We need to get the cl cluster cover removed next. You're gonna have a screw in here. There's gonna be another one right there. There's gonna be two on the top of the cluster cover. They have these little flat panels you need to, to pry up. And there's two more screws. Now you can pull this away. And you need to unplug. Unplug the dimmer switch and also this is the rear defroster. Need to remove the cluster. Four screws. One, two, number three, number four. You disconnect all the wiring. There's a couple of clips. Just push down and slide out. Looks like there's two. And the third one I can feel. And then the speedometer cable. You squeeze and pull. Very easy to disconnect those. Now we need to get the climate control removed from the center housing and also the box which holds the stereo. This one's broken. Normally you have the two screws right here and the two down at the bottom next to the pocket. Remove all four of those screws. Climate control is already busted out. You would normally remove the screw here and the screw over here to get the climate control. We just need to get it loose like this and this one will get removed completely. While we're here, go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter bolt. This connects the dash to this little bracket that connects to the body of the car. On the sides of the dash, you're going to remove this little plastic screw and on the inside you're going to see another 10 millimeter bolt. It's right inside that little vent. I don't know if you can see it. It's right inside there when you get that removed, but you have to remove this little screw so you can pop off this little plastic cover. Make sure you do that to both sides of the dash. Now if you have a glove box, let's go ahead and remove it. See this little tab here? This is initially part of the old glove box. It has, it's either a screw or a bolt. You can use an eight millimeter socket or you can use a Phillips head screw. Screwdriver, I'm sorry. Cause it does have both on it. Let me just show it to you real quick. I'm gonna take this off. There's two of these, there's one on that side. The other one is over there, that's where it would be. This is what it looks like. You can use either a screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket. Get your glove box removed. Behind the glove box, get this 10 millimeter bolt removed. And then also on this side, there are the two eight millimeter bolts. 
We need this little black bracket removed because it connects to a bracket which is attached to the wall of the car. Next up here on top of the dash, we need to get this little plate removed. And inside there's a 10 millimeter bolt you need to remove. And take a look after I removed that 10 millimeter and the two eight millimeters. The dash is almost ready to be pulled out already. You need to get back to the driver's side of the, of the dash now. Back on the driver's side of the dash, you're gonna wanna disconnect any wiring. Like, we still have the sunroof switch plugged in. We're gonna pull it away from the dashboard connection. Same with these wires. You can pull them through and feed them in the inside. That way it gives us a little more free room to pull the dash away. The cable that connects to the vent switch, we need to get disconnected. Pull off on the little button. And then with a pick or a screwdriver, we need to slide out this little cover and then disconnect the two screws. To make getting the dash out easier, I'm gonna lower the steering column. There's a handful of against these little 12 millimeter bolts. And then there's also a couple 12 millimeter nuts in here, like those right there. Two of the bolts were there on each side, and then there, and then two down on this lower bracket, right up in there. We're gonna remove all those, that way we can just drop the steering column. Okay, when the dash is pretty much free. Your steering column, mine's not attached any longer to the rack and pinion, so you could still let yours just hang there. It's gonna be perfectly fine. It's gonna give you a lot more room to maneuver. But when you start pulling the dash up and out, you need to be careful. There's a handful of wires that are connected by little clips to the back of the dash. Get it pulled forward a little bit, and then wherever it's easier for you, maybe through this side over here, if you wanna look under here, Start disconnecting all those wires that are connecting from the cabin harness to the dash. We need to get all those removed so we can pull the dash cleanly away from the car. Now looking at the dash from behind, see where the wire's held on? I know it's hard to see with the lighting behind it. Let's see if I can get a better look. There's actually a screw here that you can remove and that'll pull the wiring down with it. The clock wiring, you're gonna need to pull through this hole and disconnect it from right here. Reach in through this little vent, you can disconnect the wiring there. And you'll be able to pull this little rubber grommet through with the wiring to separate from the dash. And over here, where the wiring's connected, there's also another screw which hold the whole wiring connector. I can see another one it's back up right here in the tip of my finger. So we can remove those with just a screwdriver, not an actual of pliers or anything. Let's see if we can get all those pulled away from the dash. I'm gonna tilt it like that because still two more screws that I'm trying to get loose. And there it was, you saw me get that last, the last screw off. And the dash is now free. Pull it out. Remove from the vehicle. That's how you remove the dash out of the 88-91 CRX. This process is gonna be very, very similar to the wagon, the hatchback, and the sedan, with the small exception being the center console piece and maybe a few placement of where the nuts are and the screws are throughout the entire dash. If you're ever replacing heater core, this is also what you need to do to get to it, which can be quite, a, quite an adventure because you're gonna have to remove the blower fan, the evaporator, then the actual blower motor itself, which the heater core is attached to on the inside. But I hope this helps you guys out if you are having problems with any of your dashboard components or just swapping dashes to an upgraded CRX dash. One of my viewers, he recently had his DA stolen and he's the hardware. Two 14 millimeter nuts that go on top and that 14 millimeter bolt which connects the rear shocks 
to the body and also to the lower control arm. So we're gonna get those off for him right now. Get those shipped off for him hopefully by tomorrow. Made a lot more progress. We got all of those components removed along the firewall. I'm working on getting this entire wiring harness disconnected without cutting anything. I'd like to save it or possibly sell it for someone that could use it for an entire cabin wiring harness. I'm just connecting it all the way up to the doors. This is all the way for the sunroof. I disconnected already the wiring and the light. But I'm gonna finish working on that and get the tail lights all the way back to the tail lights for the wiring. Look at this rat's nest of wires. This is the entire wiring harness for the car with the exception of the AC wiring harness and the engine wiring harness which connect of course through the firewall. But I have all of it completely disassembled, pulled apart from all the way to the back. It's kind of neat, I didn't know but the wiring for the tail lights it goes around this side. It actually comes around here, comes across uh, by the fuel tank, and then it goes back to the front of the car. So I have this one huge harness now that I'm gonna get yanked out of the vehicle. Pretty much it for the parts off the car. It's pretty much down to a bare shell now.
What's up guys? That's it man. I'm not gonna lie, that was a pain in the ass because it's hot out. Um, I guess if I was in the shade it would have been a little bit easier but the parts where I had to be in the sun over here was a little draining. It took me about an hour and a half, two hours to cut the entire CRX up. That'll be it for this 1989 CRX SI. Hopefully the parts will contribute to some other cars out there, keep them on the road. Hope you guys enjoyed the videos. It's my first time ever cutting up a vehicle. And I'm not gonna lie, without this Milwaukee Sawzall, um, it probably would have been a pain in the ass. I wouldn't even try one of those cheap Harbor Freight ones. But uh, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys back on the wagon now and get back to work on him.